Okay, the D-type ripple counter is an asynchronous counter. We can see that the the latches are all uh, negative edge triggers, which means when the input pulse goes down, that's when the triggering will occur. Now, this circuit starts off in the off position. In other words, it starts at 0, 0, 0. That means that not Q's are all 1, which means that the D's are also all 1. So when my input goes, or my clock goes through the first pulse, then Q0 turns to 1. But because this D-type is looking for the falling edge, in other words, when that one becomes a 0, that Q still stays 0, and the same with that one. So when we get to, when this becomes a 1, then that one there becomes a 0, which feeds back a 0, feeds back a 0 over there. So with the next pulse, that zero moves over into that position because I had a one over there as it drops to zero that one moves to the output there and that one still remains zero because it's looking for the lagging edge with the next pulse that one Sorry, that was a 1 over there, and as a result, a 1 over there. That one, with the next pulse, will move to the output. As that one moves through, that one will still stay 1, because it's looking for the lagging edge, and that one will then trigger high onto that... No, this will still stay 0, because it's looking for the drop. So the next pulse, the next pulse, that zero feeds through because there's a drop there, that one becomes zero, and because that one drops, that one becomes one. So we can see with each clock pulse we get a pulse or a ripple effect happening. We can see that these pulses occur for every two input pulses. These occur for every two of the previous flip-flop. These occur for every two of the previous in, input, uh, input. As a result, the D-type ripple counter is also a frequency divider, as we stated yesterday. Okay, the JK up counter. As a synchronous counter, the JK flip flops all have the J and the K connected together. As a result, if there's a 1 on the input, it's in the hold state. If there's a, z uh, sorry. If there's a 0 on, the in on J and K, it's in the hold state. And if there's a 1 in, on the J case, then it's in the toggle state. So what we see over here is because of this 1, this flip-flop is in toggle state. So for every pulse that it receives on the lagging edge, it will cause the flipping or the toggle to occur. We accept that it is currently in the off state or in the reset state which means we've got zero there which means this JK is in the hold state we've got a zero there uh, because it's in the reset state we've got a zero there which feeds into that and over there 
and this one as well we accept it's in the zero state so when we receive our first lagging edge trigger this JK will toggle because it toggles that becomes a one this is still a zero so when it receives the clock pulse nothing happens on this output as a result it still stays zero and because that's a zero there that stays in the hold state which means it remains in the zero there when we introduce the next lagging edge trigger that one will cause that JK to toggle again. That turns that into a zero. Now because it changed from a one to zero, this JK is allowed to toggle, which means it becomes a one on the output there, which feeds one in there. Now we still have a zero feeding in to that AND gate, which means that still remains a zero on this JK, which keeps this JK into the or keeps this JK in the hold state uh, which means that still remains zero when I introduce the next clock pulse the first JK will toggle back into a one because there's the because the JK is still uh, a zero on the input over there remains one that zero keeps that a one and as a result we still have a one there that means that this one feeds through there which means that becomes a one and this JK is now waiting for the next clock pulse in order to toggle when it receives that next clock pulse and that clock pulse comes in it will toggle that output on because of the one on the input from the AND this one has got the one on the input so the clock pulse will toggle it making that a zero on the output again we've got a one there so as we receive the pulse it toggles and that becomes a zero over there so we can see again we've got the continuous counting now the problem with these counters is as soon as it reaches one 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 the next pulse will just cause it to trigger back to zero 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 With the D-type up counters, you can see again this is asynchronous. We accept that we've got zero on all the outputs. This D-type connects to a one, and that connection should not be there. I apologize for that. I will fix it in post editing. All right. So, with the first clock pulse, that one feeds into the the output will toggle. As it toggles, that is going to go high and I've got a high over there. Q1 still remains zero and Q2 also still remains zero. For the next pulse this output toggles again because of that one over there this output becomes one which feeds in there which then puts that in a I state over there. It still remains zero With the next clock pulse that comes through, this input 
is going to toggle because of the one this one is going to remain the same because I've got the zero over there and that one is going to toggle because I've got the one Uh, I'm skip the step. That's supposed to be one, one, one. There's a zero there, and then the next pulse is going to toggle that output high. This one will toggle. That's going to become a zero. That one's going to become a zero because it toggles. And then each consecutive pulse afterwards is just going to toggle because of the high on the D type. Let's.